Welcome to this week's edition of Good Books Radio. Audiobooks.com is the chief underwriter for Good Books Radio, which is produced by UTRGV Media Services for Rio Grande Valley Public Radio. And now, here's your host, Dr. W.F. Strong. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to this week's edition of Good Books Radio. I'm your host today, Dr. W.F. Strong, and I'm excited to be here because we have an unusual guest in the sense that she is a prominent member of the national news media. Her name is Lise Wheel of Fox News. You've probably heard of her, and you've probably seen her as legal analyst sparring with Bill O'Reilly every week on Fox News. She was born on August 19, 1961 in Yakima, Washington. Lise Wheel graduated with a bachelor's degree from Bernard College and a Master of Arts in Literature from uh, the University of Queens, as well as a JD from Harvard Law School. Currently, she is working as a legal analyst and reporter for the Fox News Channel, and she hosts the weekly segment of the O'Reilly Factor, Is It Legal? So that's probably where you are most familiar with her. She is beautiful, and she is smart. And I'm quite honored to have her coming on Good Books Radio today. We'll talk to her in just a a few moments. Lise Wheel has previously worked as a professor at New York Law School as well as the University of Washington Law School. She's quite a renowned author. Lise Wheel has published various best-selling books, which include Winning Every Time, How to Use the Skills of a Lawyer in the Trials of Your Life, the 51% Minority, as well as the Triple Threat series. We're going to be talking to her today about her trilogy of the Newsmaker series, which is writing, you know, what she knows. And the third in that trilogy is what we're going to be discussing today. It is called The Separatists. From the New York Times bestselling author, Lise Wheel comes the final book in the Newsmaker series, Journalist and newscaster Erica Sparks is only planning to report on an explosive story until she gets caught in the middle of it. After getting the green light from her network to launch an investigative news show, Erica flies to Bismarck, North Dakota to investigate. Take Back Our Homeland is the group she is investigating. It is the largest secessionist group in the country. And what she finds is profoundly disturbing, a growing threat to the future of the United States. Back home, her husband Greg is drinking more and talking less and taking an unusual interest in the glamorous author Leslie Wilson. Erica's teenage daughter has also begun acting out in troubling ways. Then she discovers a potential informant murdered in her Bismarck Hotel. Take Back Our Homeland might even be responsible for it, and she's unwittingly become one of the key players in the story she's covering. Her fear and anxiety escalate for her marriage, her daughter, and her own life. Complicated, yes. So this is the story we're going to be talking about today with Lise Wheel. And uh, Lise, welcome to the program. My first question is going to be an unusual one. I want to ask you about Australia. I love the character, and I've read uh, elsewhere that uh, you know people ask you, "Is Erica Sparks you?" And you say, mm-hmm. "No." But uh, there's elements of her here. Like one of the things I read is that you said that, uh, like Erica Sparks, you play solitaire. Yes, mm-hmm. yes, I do. I, I, um, I play solitaire, and I play real well, real solitaire, meaning not on the computer. I don't, I don't know how to play it on the computer, not on my little phone or anything. I see people on planes and stuff doing mm-hmm. it on that. Um, but I learned how to play solitaire from my more, more, which is w- the Danish word for grandmother. It's mother's mm-hmm. mother. More is mother. Uh-huh. So if you say mother's mother, you say more, more. More, more. So my more, more, yeah, mm-hmm. my more, more played solitaire. And I learned how to play solitaire from her. And I have played solitaire all, well, not all my life. I didn't play when I was a baby. I mean, mm-hmm. how could you control the car? Mm, yeah, right. Um, but, but really, ever since I remember, uh, as a little girl, I've played solitaire. And I try to 
even when I travel, well, especially when I travel, carry a pack of cards with me. Um, and if I don't have a pack of cards, I'll, you know, buy one. And it just, it just, um, it, it helps me think. I'll just mm-hmm. pull out a pack of cards, and if I need to have a little quiet time, I'll just, you know, close the door, and I'll just put it out on the table. And it helps me center myself and just think. If I need it, if I'm trying to work through an issue, I'll, I will just, um, sometimes I'll pull out a pen and paper and I'll write things down. That obviously, that's obvious. Mm-hmm. But sometimes if I'm working on an issue and I can't think it through, I'll just pull out that's a pack of cards and I'll play, yep, play solitaire. Mm-hmm. And boom, then it's like, ah, that's what I'm going to do. So if Bill O'Reilly sometimes upsets you. Sometimes just in the middle you, of a game. If, yeah. If Bill O'Reilly upsets you, you play solitaire. <laughs> Play solitaire, and I got to figure it out. It, 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 it just—I don't know what it is. It's uh-huh. just because um, you, you have to focus, mm-hmm. and it's—you never know where the cards are going to go. Yeah. Um, you can't cheat. That's the thing. Mm-hmm. You yes. can't cheat mm-hmm. because if you cheat, you're cheating on yourself. Right. There's, because there's you no know one else cheating. playing. I like solitaire. I've play, I played solitaire a lot. I did. I did, yeah. I did uh, migrate over to computers, but. The uh, but I agree with you. The, the cards. There's something like about the handling the, the cards. cards. Yeah. Yes. Just like I like the feeling. Uh, like I like the feeling of a book. And I know I sound so old fashioned. I mm-hmm. love the feeling of turning the pages. I love the feeling. Like I've got the separatist right in front of me for this interview. Mm-hmm. And I love. And I've, I've for this interview. Well, for all the interviews, mm-hmm. I've I've got the stickies. You know, the yellow stickies. Right. And I've I've got stickies. Love kind of lovingly put on different pages. Uh-huh. Um, with notes on them, and I've got earmarks, you know, where I've, I've earmarked pages. And I just, I like it. I li- like, I'm, I'm, I'm rifling through pages right now. I just love that feeling of, and it just, of the pages. And I know Kindle's the thing, and I know it, and I love it. And, and you know, you know gosh, you know, love for Kindle. And I sell lots of Kindles. Well, great. Um, I just love the feeling of the pages, of, of just, you know, just that tactile feeling. And I know that's so old-fashioned. I sound like I'm 102, <laughs> um, which I'm, I'm getting really close to getting on. But um, that's just me. I just I just love that old feeling. And, you know, you take it anywhere. You go to the beach and you get sand in the <laughs> middle of it and you have to shake out the <laughs> sand. I know, yeah. God. I just, I know, I know. I just, I know. No, I'm with okay, you. Okay, all right. Put, I'm with you. Nurse, I'm with you. I, send me away. <laughs> Well, well, you know, it's like McLuhan said, form is everything. And so if you, yeah. so if you get to, you look, look at the people today who are uh, going back to, you know, old LPs because they like mm-hmm. the sound of the scratchiness <laughs> in the background. Yeah, exactly. There's something nostalgic about it. And so I think we just can enjoy different platforms. You know, we don't have to be, one doesn't have to be superior. They can just be different. No, no, they're different. And also, and obviously some forms are better when you're traveling or, Anything like that. I mean, I just and I just like you know. And at home, I like to have a place where there's a library where you actually see books. And oh yeah, that's all. That's just that's just me being just me. Um, and I it's just it's just different. Exactly, it's just different. I've got to be up with the times. Well, I God, would, I really got I really. Oh my God, we got to stop here. <laughs> oh, this is ridiculous. <laughs> Before the the kids was like, okay, mom, it's time to time to wheel you away now. This the solitaire is getting to your head. But there are other things too. I mean, little things like uh, Erica wears clip-on earrings, and they're mm-hmm. you know they're just little things that that are certainly. But they're, they're bigger things too about Erica. That um, I would say that the main thing that that is not me is that you know Erica and her parenting style. That's definitely not me. But I wanted to I wanted to make Erica complicated and not perfect. And, um, well, she had a rough childhood, and, and you didn't. She, she yeah, exactly. She really rough. T- but I wanted. I did that for on purpose, mm-hmm. um, because she's overcoming things and and being challenged. Because, you know, if I put her there in Manhattan and I put her there at the pinnacle of her career, and she's got this great job, and she's you know conquering Manhattan, and she's it, it's boring. Then, mm-hmm. then it's like, oh yeah, yeah. yeah she, but no I can't issues. relate to her. Yeah, no issues. No, boring. Mm-hmm. I don't want to. I don't want to read about, about a perfect character. I want a character who's suffering. Not yeah, suffering inside because because mm-hmm. we all are in some ways. We're all suffering with something. Um, Plus, you were able to give her a, a consistent kind of. Uh, Self doubt from time to time exactly. because of that background. Uh, exactly. I wondered. I wondered about you. You know, you came from a very, uh, <clears throat> from a very loving background. 
<clears throat> and uh, I would suppose that uh, in most of your, your childhood, you didn't see a lot of horrific conflict. And then you get in front of a personality like Bill O'Reilly. Uh, did he make you uncomfortable originally? Well, I think everybody, I mean, well, I, I only can speak for myself. I think, I think, um, well, you know, doesn't everyone suffer a little bit from sort of the emperor has no clothes <laughs> yes, sort of feeling, yeah. right? Absolutely, That, yes. you know, yeah. right, that, that yeah. um, I remember when I got into Harvard at first, I thought, oh, how didn't could they, I get here? Me, yeah, <laughs> didn't didn't they didn't they didn't make a mistake? Didn't they? Didn't they <laughs> should they? Yeah, did yes. they mean? I admit, Lisa Wheeler, <laughs> you know, and yes. they just got the name wrong because my name nobody can get right, and so mm -hmm. then they were too embarrassed, you know, because mm -hmm. they are after Harvard Law School, they can't make a mistake. Make a mistake so like then that. they met. Yeah, they met. They met to, in, in, in Lisa Wheeler, and then I saw it was Lisa Wheel. They admitted. But they couldn't. I mean, they can't make a mistake. <laughs> That's a great so crap, story. we got we got to get. You know, I'm just making this up. So, yes. so the, you know. So then it's like, oh, we got her in. Well, we can't. And so you know, you then you see how the ball goes. I and understand. Then it's like, well, you know. But so so yeah, definitely. I mean, doesn't everyone? But oh, yeah. you know, I said that to a friend once over dinner. I was out with another friend, and there were I, it was three. It was three people. Uh -huh. And um, an, two, another friend had invited me. We were going out with another friend, and we asked this other friend the question, and she said no about the emperor. She said, oh, no, I don't feel that way. And the two really? of us looked at each other going like, really? So, so not everybody shares that? <laughs> it was a really awkward moment. I remember that. That was years ago. You're, you're asking me that. This is like a psychiatry session. Wow. <laughs> this is like a therapy session. But yeah, the two of us looked at each other like, wow. Well, so reminds, then we just shut up. It reminds me of... Uh, <laughs> it reminds me of Woody Allen's you know, famous saying that he didn't ever want to belong to... A, a club, oh, a club that would have yeah. him as a member. You know, it couldn't be that exactly. great if That's they would so have him. Funny. Yeah, why, why would I? Need, I've been kicked out of better places than this. <laughs> I've been kicked out of better places than this. Yeah, I think, well, at least I think most of the people that I hang around with anyway, mm -hmm. when they're really honest, would say that mm -hmm. they suffer a little bit from, yeah, I mean, when you, you know, strip everything away, that sure, everybody suffers a little bit from feeling like, wow, am I really, you know, was I really admitted to this club? <laughs> um, really and I here. think, am I really here? And and maybe that keeps you on your toes. People ask me, don't you get nervous? Do you, oh, I'm sure you're not, you know, I've been in this business broadcast or whatever for more than 15 years. I'll be 16 in a couple mm -hmm. months. Um, uh, and writing and everything. Um, you must probably don't get nervous anymore when you go on. I said, I said, the minute... I don't get a little bit of an adrenaline rush every time I do an interview, mm -hmm. then I should quit. Mm -hmm. Because, in fact, you and I were just talking about that. I, I think I said to you right before we went on, I said, I got, I'm a little nervous. <laughs> yes, you, you did. You? <laughs> yeah, I did, right? Honestly, You're nervous? You, that's, yeah, exactly. That, right, Bill? You could attest to that. We had exactly that off-air off, off, right. uh, yeah. off, um, conversation. Mm -hmm. And you said, are you nervous? I said, Yeah. <laughs> And I said, the minute I don't have that is probably the minute I should think about hanging it up. Because, and I, I say that because we should have a little bit of that. Because um, it's an honor to be speaking with you. And it's an honor, especially to be speaking with you, but also knowing that you're going to be sharing with the people that have honored you Mm -hmm. um, to be listening to your program yeah. and to be taking you into, your, into their homes and, and, and to listening to, to just spending their precious time um, listening to you and listening to me. Yes. And that's precious. That's really precious. And so if we don't take that, you know, as a little bit of with a, you know, like, wow, <laughs> yeah. then, you know, something's a little, then it's, there's something wrong there. So yeah. I, I, th I think we should also have a little bit of an adrenaline rush for that. Well, to tell you the truth, when uh, I had a bit of your earlier response, when uh, I got this interview, I said, uh, does, is, there a, is there a mistake? Does she know who she's going to be talking to? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm thrilled. I'm thrilled. But we do, specialize, we do specialize in books, and so, <laughs> you, so you're in the right place. I would think so. Yes, I know. I know I'm in the right place. <laughs> so the... Um, 
Uh, well, we don't have a, a, a lot more time, but I wanted to spend a little more time on, on the book. You were talking about earmarking things. I earmarked uh, a part where you talked about Texas, naturally, because yes. here we are. Yes, of course. And, uh, and I thought you were spot on, as the British say, in your description okay. of, um, of Texas attitude, character. I don't, however, have a gun on me at this moment, but uh, oh. <laughs> but I do have one at home. Uh, right. So, but anyway, you say that uh, Erica had never spent more than a day or two in Texas, and it all felt foreign and forbidding with its macho, almost obsessive worship of guns. Correct. Well, she's correct. Yeah, 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 yeah. Now, I I did spend a little time in Texas because my dad was uh, Dallas Fort Worth when JFK, after JFK was shot. In fact, he um, was. Uh, Signed to Marina Oswald debriefing, mm-hmm. so I was there oh for some time. Yeah, yeah, I, but I don't remember much of it. I was only four years, oh, yeah, four years old, I guess. Is that the only so time you've been here? It's the only time uh, you've been to Texas? Air, just through the airports. But you know what? I would love, and we can talk. You know, maybe uh, off air mm-hmm. about this. But I would love to come down for a signing or something like that at some point. I mean, you could probably help me arrange something. I could. But we'll talk off air. I would okay. love that, Bill. I, let's uh, let's do emails or something. I would okay. really. I'd really love to do that. That'd be marvelous. Um, I I really would. I'm mm-hmm. t- absolutely sincerely. I would. I'd mm-hmm. fly down there in, a, in, a, in an instant. Um, but yeah, that's really the only time as a child I have pictures of myself. Oh, I, I posed nude with my mom in the pool in Dallas. Wow, <laughs> pictures of that. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I was. I was. My dad was stationed there in Dallas, Fort Worth, uh, debriefing Marine Oswald for six months. I guess we were there oh, at least. Goodness. Yeah, so yeah, he, so, yeah. So a lone um, gunman? I wrote a book. Does your father believe it's a lone gunman? Uh, yes, he yes. does. He absolutely believes it's a lone Yep, he does. Yep, he was part of the report. He believes it's a lone gunman. Um, absolutely, 100%. He was acknowledged in Bill's book about killing Kennedy. You'll see Richard Wheel mm-hmm. acknowledged in the book as an FBI agent. I wrote a book um, around a picture that my dad took while stationed there called Snapshot. Mm-hmm. You might want to check out. Uh, okay. It's a fiction book, but it's a book that I. Uh, it's a book around a snapshot that my father took while he, we were at a. Uh, he was at a civil rights march, and he took it of, of me sitting right next to a little African American girl at a civil rights march, mm-hmm. and he just brought, brought this little snapshot of me a couple of years back, and he said, "Oh, yeah, I had this snapshot," and I just I looked at one a, a picture of this book, and I go, oh, "Dad." <laughs> there's a book. Or, there's a there's a there's a there's a novel around this book, and I just went to my room, and my my study, and I just ah! mm-hmm. and he, my hair was my the, the hair was standing straight up, and he said, "Oh my God, my, what's wrong with my daughter?" And that came out like, and I then I was a good hostess for a little bit after that, but I just was like, "I got a book. There's a book there." This is your seventeen. And he, he knows he he knows me well enough to know that 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 was there was a book there, and mm-hmm. uh, true enough, I wrote a book out out of that. This is your seventeenth book, right? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. My good. When when do you find the time to write all these? Uh, books? Yeah. Well, it, you every know, day I you just write a little do bit because I love it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, every day I write a little bit. That's uh-huh. right. Exactly. But this is the third in the uh, Erica Sparks series, right? This is the third in the Erica mm-hmm. Sparks series. That's mm-hmm. right. Yes. Well, she's a very provocative character. I like her. She is. I like her too. She's got funk and guts and grit. And then She's the good. and then the the plot is kind of ripped from not to be it's a cliche, but it's taken from today's headlines, so it has uh, you know great relevancy. Yeah, but don't forget this that I actually wrote this book. I mean, as you know, it takes almost yeah. uh, what a year mm-hmm. from or more or more mm-hmm. from you know genesis to fruition. So mm-hmm. I mean, it's publication. So. Um, I kind of like, I was like, wow, it, you know, but, but oh, I want to, I do want to say something about that. Um, I signed myself, you know, I do a lot of research for these novels and I signed myself up for, a, you know, a Google alert on secession, separatism, that mm-hmm. kind of thing. And I thought maybe I'll get like a, you know, alert once a week, once a week that there'll be a news article that I need to read um, in relationship to this as I'm doing my research. Because, you know, to be, I, you need to be educated and I need to be educated so I could be relevant and write with authority realistically for settings mm-hmm. and et cetera on the, in the and book. And you do. And thank you. Uh, thank you so much. Um, I get three or four emails or three or four alerts a day. 
a day. For secessionists. Yes. Yeah. Of course, we have a not lot in kidding. Texas. No, no, but not just, no. Mm. Not just California, not just Texas. Mm. All, over all, the, over. Well, all over the world, all over the world, and also in the United States. Mm-hmm. I am, you, try, well, you have someone to, uh, to do, but it is amazing. I was shocked. I was shocked, and I don't want to sound like, you know, crazy lady. Well, I, could, mm-hmm. I might sound like crazy lady anyway, but um, it's amazing. It is really a movement. Does it it's worry you? <sighs> like it does Erica? <laughs> um, is it big enough to worry about? Not, I mean, no. I mean, yeah, a little, I guess, because it is out there. Mm-hmm. It really is out there. Yeah. I mean, I guess I'm so mired in it right now that mm-hmm. right now it's kind of, wow. Um, I guess there are a lot more, a lot bigger things to worry about, honestly. Um, but it is out there. Not quite as, not as much as the separatists. Right, know? right. Not to... I mean, right, Erica, like what Erica's dealing with. I mean, Erica's like, this is, this is the fate of the world that Erica's dealing with. Of course, it's a novel. Um, but, but as you bring up in the book, one to 10, Erica's mm-hmm. dealing with a 10. Okay. Mm-hmm. Let's yes. put it the best way. Right. In the real world, we're probably dealing with the United States. We're probably dealing with a two, you know, mm-hmm. but it is out there. It really is. I was just, I thought we were dealing with a zero. We're probably dealing with a two. Well, as you bring up in the book in the Texas legislature, they took a vote on yeah. secession. They, you know, it, it failed, but as you pointed out, but it's real. And there's a real. lot of people. In the, one of the reasons it's so big in Texas uh, is that uh, there's this persistent and incorrect belief that we have a constitutional right to secede without uh, conflict. You know, that we, when we joined the Union, we had a little clause, an escape clause that said, right. we can leave when we want. And it's not true, but people insist on believing it. And I will even tell people, I say, no, it's not true. It's not there. And they say, you just need to do some more reading, son. <laughs> you know, because they just right. they just believe I'm just not doing my research. You know, but, no, uh, it's there, it's yeah. there. I mean, it really that that's and I really do. Um, I believe that novels, at least for me, mm-hmm. um, this is just my personal belief, are meant to entertain and be that beach read with the sand in the book, like we were talking about earlier, mm-hmm. um, but also to inform. I mean, I think that again, our time is precious. And at least, again, just for me, I don't want a book that is just fluff. I, I guess I, I'm done with Harlequin romances. <laughs> you know, those were great when I was 12 and 13. <laughs> and even then, I remember coming home from one uh, week on the beach with a girlfriend when I was like 12 or, you know, when my, with her mom took me or whatever. And I came back and I, was, I said to my mom, I'm done with Harlequin romances, and my mom just laughed. She said, I knew you would be, sweetheart, because I just read Harlequin romances for a week, and that was it. And that, that was enough. That was You're... enough. I was like, Ugh, I'm done with that. Well, who are you? I'm done with that at 12. Who are your favorite writers? You know what? I can't do that. I won't do that, because mm-hmm. I just, that wouldn't be fair. Mm-hmm. I just, I'm always, I'm, I love so many of them, and... Um, mm-hmm. Uh, well, just a, a, a couple who, who deeply you. influenced you. You know, like you you quoted Catherine Twain. Catherine Ann Porter. Catherine Ann Porter. Okay. I'd start right there. Okay. America, as far as American writers go, mm-hmm. oh, I love I love Catherine Ann Porter, and she's really not given enough to do. Um, but go back and read some of Catherine Ann Porter's short stories. Go read some. Uh, uh, go go back and reread Catherine Ann Porter. Strong woman. From the south, from the south. I will, <laughs> because I was going to mention in your, uh, you quote Twain on the. I, I, yeah, I said to my wife, she had me at Twain. <laughs> Twain. Well, of quoted, course. Quoted Twain on the first Twain. page. I'm a Twain scholar, so you know. It's, of it's course. Natural. Well, I'm not a scholar, but mm-hmm. of course Twain. I mean, of course. Mm-hmm. Um, yes, yes, but 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 yeah, that's tough. I I always, you know, and I'm I'm meeting. Um, 
people. I, I would, I'm, you know, I'm meeting people all the time and mm-hmm. so lucky in this business to, uh, in July, there's a thriller fest in, in Manhattan that I've gone to the last three or four years and meeting new writers there. Um, Linda Fairstein is great, you know, in, there in New York. Uh, she's a mystery writer. And, um, you know, Steve Barry, you get the chance to meet him over the last few years, a wonderful writer. You know, so I'm meeting people that are alive. You right. know, Catherine and Porter obviously is not. And so it's just hard to name a favorite. I mean, yeah. Steve Barry has, is, is an alive person. Mm-hmm. Alive. He's, a, he's an alive person who's been a great almost mentor to me over the last four or five years. And I love his work. Linda Fairstein, same way. Um, you know, so there's so many people who, you know, are in. And so, gosh forbid, if one of them hears this interview and yeah, they I haven't understand. been mentioned. You know, that's the yes. thing. That's why I'm like, uh, I can't. I'm gone. Well, let's talk about dead I'm writers. Then. <laughs> yeah, let's talk about dead. So if, I, if I'm, I'm safe with Catherine Ann Porter, yes, yes. she's dead, and she uh, can't be mad at me. <laughs> <laughs> but would you say she influenced you? Yes, okay. absolutely. I wrote mm-hmm. about her in my thesis, my master's thesis. Mm-hmm. Um, she, I wrote about her and Jessica Anderson. Jessica Anderson is a Australian writer, mm-hmm. and I did a comparison contrast, and I was lucky enough to actually meet with Jessica Anderson in her home in Sydney, Australia. Oh, Jessica Anderson, yeah, Jessica, uh, Miss Anderson has since passed, but um, that was wonderful to actually be greeted by an author that you know I admired mm-hmm. in her home, have high tea with her. Um, high tea. <laughs> well, with you know, it was, it was, you know, with the Australian version, and it was just lovely. I wrote her a letter, mm-hmm. an old-fashioned letter from Brisbane, where I was living, and I told her I was, what I was doing, and I was writing this thesis, and and I read all her work, and could I meet with her? And she said yes, and I went to Sydney and met with her, and it was lovely. And then I wrote this comparison contrast between this um, southern writer. And this Australian writer, I mean, who would have thought? Yeah, who would have yeah. thought, right? Mm-hmm. I don't remember exactly what I said, but it was brilliant. <laughs> I'm sure it was brilliant. Sure I, it was. I say, wait, wait, wait. I say it was brilliant. <laughs> Did you see a lot of comparison between the Southern U.S. and Australian culture? Is any, um, any connection it, it was, there? It, it was, you know, and I don't it, honestly. It's been so long since I wrote it, but mm-hmm. I remember just thinking about these two women who really had to forge their own way and mm-hmm. who really um, kind of fought against the culture in, a, mm-hmm. in many ways, honestly, uh, yeah. because they really had to fight it, fight against the culture that, you know, of it, sort of fighting for their own independence. Like Erica. Um, and it, like, exactly. <laughs> you know what? Gosh. There this you has are. really been a therapy session. <laughs> uh, where there do I send? <laughs> you want to Okay, I'll give you my address to, to send the bill. <laughs> Okay, well, listen, um, out of time, but uh, it's been been a marvelous chat. And uh, do, you, do you have a, a kind of final thought about uh, the book? Something you want people to understand? Um, I I think you'll I think you'll enjoy meeting Erica Sparks if you haven't met her yet. Um, she's a complicated character. She'll take you on a just a, a whirlwind journey. That's true. That I think you'll I, yeah I think I think you I think that's fair to say. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I think you'll enjoy the ride. And that's, that's you know, that's, I think, Bill, you'll, your listeners will listen to you more than they'll listen mm-hmm. to me and, 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 you know, say what you want to say. I, I, I think you'll enjoy it. Um, I can't promise you more than that, but I think you'll well, enjoy it. A, and Since it's summertime, uh, and this is not to put the book into, you know, a genre that disrespects it, but it's a good beach read, really is. You know, yeah. it's, it's something you can read in a, a day or two. Uh, it depends on how fast you read, uh, but a, a good couple of days. And uh, since you <laughs> were talking about the the sand in the in the book, <laughs> I thought it was said, yeah, it is a good beach read. It's that time of year. You need a book at the beach. This is this is a good one. Yeah, yeah, I think I think so too. I think so too. You'll have fun with it. <laughs> And it's short chapters. You can you can read and then you go play in the sand and then come right. back and then read some more. You know, it's good. And you make and I really and you make yeah. good royalties no matter where the, no matter where they read it. Exactly. Right. It doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> You'll so. have fun with it. All right. Well, thank you so much. We've been talking to Fox News legal analyst Lise Wheel about her new novel, The Separatists. You can listen to this interview again on our YouTube channel. Good Books Radio at YouTube or on our Facebook page, Good Books Radio uh, on Facebook, of course. 
And uh, I think this is a good beach read, this one, The Separatist. I think you will uh, enjoy it out there on the beach with the smell of the ocean and the crashing of the waves. Great book for that. So I'll be... uh, So I'm W.F. Strong signing off for Good Books Radio, and here's hoping that all your books, as always, are good reads. (laughs) 